Good morning. This is a live stream from Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church. Thank you for viewing and being with us. I joined the psalmist when he said in Psalms 122 verse 1, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are streaming from our church facility located at 1180 Washington Boulevard in Beaumont, Texas, 77705. Our founding pastor is Dr. Reuben Sampson. Our pastor is Reverend Reuben R.I. Sampson, Jr. I am Rebecca Jean, and I will be leading us in prayer. Our Lord Jesus taught us that his house is a house of prayer. So we begin each worship with prayer. This is my personal invitation to you to come and worship with us at your earliest convenience. You will be glad, so glad that you did. Again, our church facility is located at 1180 Washington Boulevard in Beaumont, Texas. We will begin this morning with the prayers for uh, the churches and ministry, I apologize. I kind of had it up and it went somewhere else. Just a second. Please pray in the Holy Spirit so I can get to this. Kiss us. Thank you. For those of you that have the red book, it would be on page 30. Thank you. For, oh, and for those of you uh, on Facebook, if you do not have the prayers, you can just join with us by repeating in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of each prayer point. Thank you, Father, for the promise which says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I ask for forgiveness for every sin causing disunity and powerlessness in the body of Christ. We take authority over the power of darkness in all its ramifications in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind and cast out every spirit causing seduction, false doctrine, deception, hypocrisy, pride and error in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every plan and strategy of Satan against the body of Christ be bound in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every spirit of prayerlessness, discouragement, and vain glory in the body of Christ be bound in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the spirit of prayer, encouragement, and the glory of God be loosed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, let the spirit of brokenness be released upon us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command the works of the flesh in the lives of the brethren to die in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the power of the cross and of the Holy Spirit be released to dethrone flesh in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father, release our spirits to control our souls in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the life of our Lord Jesus Christ be truly established in the body of Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every power of selfishness, overambition, and unteachableness be broken and destroyed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, grant unto the body of Christ, the mind of Christ, forgiving spirit, tolerance, genuine repentance, understanding, submission, humility, brokenness, watchfulness, and the mind to commend others better than ourselves in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We challenge and pull down the forces of disobedience in the lives of the saints in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command these blessings on the body of Christ and the ministers of God. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, 
gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, divine healing, divine health and wealth, fruitfulness, progress, faith, the gifts of healing, prophecy, discerning of spirits, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the working of miracles, diverse kinds of tongues, the interpretation of tongues, beauty and glory of God, righteousness and holiness, dedication and commitment. Father, create the thirst and hunger for God and holiness in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, send down the fire of revival into the body of Christ. Lord, break and refill your ministers and vessels afresh. Let there be a full and fresh outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon the ministers of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, give unto your ministers the power for effective prayer life. O oh Lord, release faithful, committed, dedicated, and obedient laborers into the vineyard. We break down the authority and dominion of Satan over the souls of men in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every spirit holding the souls of men in captivity, we shatter your backbone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every covenant between the souls of men and Satan, we dash you to pieces in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the spirit of steadfastness, consistency, hunger, and thirst for the words of God come upon the converts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, release upon all our missionaries and evangelists fresh fire to disgrace territorial spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We break the power and the grip of the world upon the souls of men in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We release the spirit of salvation upon areas that have not been reached by the gospel in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, remove all the hindrances to your purpose for Christian homes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We command the spirit of quarrel, immorality, unfaithfulness, infirmity, disagreement, misunderstanding, and intolerance to lose their grips upon Christian homes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let all Christian homes be a light to the world and a vehicle of salvation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, raise up Esther, Ruth, and Deborah in this generation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every power destroying joy in the home be dismantled in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, grant us special wisdom to train our children in your glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every Christian marriage that has been rearranged by the enemy be corrected in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, let the spirit of wisdom, judgment, submission, gentleness, obedience to God's word, and faithfulness in the home Come upon Christian homes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, remove every wrong spirit from the midst of your children and put in the right spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We take authority over the plans and activities of Satan on ministers' homes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, Increase the power and strength of the ministration of your words amongst us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, let the kingdom of Christ come into every nation by fire. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, dismantle every man-made program in the body of Christ and set up your own program. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every enemy of the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church and the Lord's Church worldwide scattered in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, arise and uproot anything you did not plant inside the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church and in the Lord's Church worldwide in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fire of revival, 
follow up on Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church and on the Lord's Church worldwide in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father, make Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church and the Lord's Church worldwide citadels of holiness, wonder, healing, miracles, and glory upon the earth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, bring the workers of your choice to Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church and to the Lord's Church worldwide and keep all other evil agents away. Let the fire of revival fall upon Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church and upon the Lord's Church worldwide in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We will be reading several, seven prayer points from uh, the Prayer, Praise, and Healing Night, July 23rd, 2001. And we'll be starting with prayer point number 49 for those of you that have. Let the fire of revival fall upon Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Every barrenness in Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church, we uproot you by fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bind barrenness and we lose fertility and abundance in the womb of the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church. That the womb is open and lively in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every impossible situation surrounding Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church it is written that with God all things are possible. Therefore, we speak unto you. Growth of Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church. Come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth, come forth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every arrow of unproductivity fired against Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church. We command you to return back to your ascender by fire and by force in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O favor of God, make a way for the Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church where there is no way in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O Lord, let the spirit of favor baptize Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as we pray daily every morning. O oh, Holy Father, make us a money magnet in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, Thou that troubleth the Israel of Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church, the God of Elijah shall trouble you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit. We will now be reading the prayers for abundance in our finances. And it starts with Deuteronomy uh, verse 28 and 12. The Lord shall open to me his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain to my land and my season, and to bless all the work of my hand. And I shall lend unto many nations, and I shall not borrow. Prayer point one. O Spirit of God, hover over our finances and speak light and life to them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O God, engraft us into your tree of abundance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O God, cause your face to shine brightly upon us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, plant us in our financial Eden in Jesus Christ's name. O oh Lord, cause all our allies to find us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh creator of heaven and earth, reveal to us the hidden treasures that you have for us and bring us to them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wisdom of heaven, come to us for our finances in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every good financial seed that we have planted lying dormant in the soil, 
water, find you light, find you and sprout and bring forth abundant fruit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O wisdom of Solomon, come to us for finances in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Money and favor, find us now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O God, guide us to our financial wells in Jesus Christ's name. O God who sees, cause the waters of abundance to flow to us and our households in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O Lord, let the anointing of Joseph abound in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are tithers and givers. Therefore, windows of heaven be open and pour out all our blessings to us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us find the palm trees in every desert in our finances in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every wall of Jericho in our finances collapse now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, bless us in the land of our affliction with abundance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the creative ideas that you give us make us rich and further the kingdom of God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Liberality and generosity are our portion in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Our last set of prayers will be the prayers for correction in our finances. Tree of life be resurrected in our lives. Tree of life be resurrected in our lives. Tree of life be resurrected in our lives in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, Make the dry places fertile in our finances in Jesus Christ's name. O oh Lord, unlock all the padlocks on our treasure chests in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, rebuke the devourer in our finances in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every diversion of our financial blessings away from us O oh Lord, reverse the diversion and cause the finances to flow to us now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, make the crooked way straight in our finances in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every fight for our finances in the spirit realm be won in our favor in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ground that was iron and sky that was brass in our finances Turn back to fertile soil and abundant rain in our finances in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let our seeds always find good soil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, defend my our finances in Jesus Christ's name. O oh Lord, repair every busted gate in our finances in Jesus Christ's name. Every lock on our finances that does not have a key we knock you loose in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every financial book be flipped on your head in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, tares among our harvest, burn yourself up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All treasure chests with our name on them, find us now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, God, show us as you show Jacob how to make strong what is weak in our finances in Jesus Christ's name. O oh God, for every Goliath I've killed, we've killed, cause us to be paid badly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Key of David, come to us and unlock every door closed against us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God of more than enough, bring our finances from the prison to the palace just as you did for Joseph, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, we honor you with our money all of our days, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every Haman in our finances, hang yourself, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Spirit of mammon, we are not your dwelling place, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. O oh God, open your good treasures unto us now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May our treasure and our hearts always remain with you, God, 
regardless of our financial status. Thank you, Holy Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We now welcome Pastor Lindsay Granger to lead us in praise and worship. God is worthy. He's holy. He's mighty. He's awesome. He's omnipotent, omniscient. There is none like him in all the earth. Let us receive her, him, receive her, and worship him. Amen. Good morning this morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Ooh, let's try that again. How are y'all doing this morning? <laughs> Did you have your coffee this morning? Your orange juice, whatever gets you going. Good morning and welcome again to the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be here in his presence today. Why don't you stand in his presence this morning as we just bless his name and lift him up. Why don't you lift your hands in his presence and just begin to tell him how awesome he is. Tell him how wonderful he is, how mighty he is, how he's everything that he said that he would be. God, we honor you and we bless your name. You're worthy to be praised, for there is none like you. We can search all over. We find nobody like you. Nobody can do the things that you do. Nobody can do what you can. Nobody can provide the miracles that you give God. We honor you and we bless your name this morning. Our hearts are consumed with your worship. Our hearts are consumed with your praise, oh God. We were created to bring glory to your name. We were created. The very breath that's in our bodies is to bless your name. The breath that's in our bodies is to glorify you, God. And we honor you. We lift you up in this place that you would have your way this morning, oh God. Lift that heavy heart this morning, oh God. I thank you, God, that you're fixing situations right here and now while we're praising you, while we're worshiping you, while you, while we're exalting you, oh God. We know that you're working on situations. We bless your name this morning. Nobody like you nowhere. Our great, big, mighty God is worthy to receive the glory this morning. He's worthy to receive the honor this morning. God, we bless you in this place. You're a great, big, mighty God. You're a God of kindness, a God of love, a God of mercy. Where would we be without your mercy this morning? God, we honor you and we bless your name this morning. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm just thankful that we serve such a merciful God, such an able God, such a strong God. He's compassionate and he's merciful, but he's such a strong and a mighty God. And I love that about him. God, we honor you this morning. God, we honor you this morning. Can we do this without music this morning? Just to lift him up. Just to, with, with your voice. With your voice, with your song to bless his name. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, oh, oh. 
Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. He's worthy to receive the glory this morning. He's worthy to receive the honor this morning. He's worthy to receive the praise. God, we lift you high in this place. You may be seated in the presence of God this morning. Hallelujah. Psalm 145 and 1 says, I will exalt you. My God, the King, I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. That's an amazing God that we serve. God, we thank you this morning for your very presence that's in this place. Thank you that you move how you want to move and do what you want to do, oh God. We're yielded to you this morning. Our hearts are yielded to you. Our spirits are yielded to you. Our ears are yielded to hear from you this morning, oh God. We pray for those that are watching the live, God. We pray for those that will see the replay, God. I thank you that you touch right there where they are, oh God. Touch their hearts right there where they are. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus who causes us to triumph in every situation. That it will say he is our God and through him we do valiantly. This is the day that the Lord has made. I do rejoice and I am glad in it. How about you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love to hear daddy say that. It turns your day around when you say that. Speak that sometimes throughout your day and it will turn your entire attitude your whole day around because every day is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it in spite of your situation in spite of your circumstance it's still the day that the Lord made for us to rejoice and be glad in him hallelujah glory to God well I'm excited this morning I have the task of bringing the word of God this morning I thank God for my pastor's in their absence, Dr. Samson, Pastor Samson, Daddy and my brother, I thank God for them this morning. And immediately when they asked me about standing this morning, I said, yes, sir, and yes. I knew I had to say yes, not because they are my family, but because God is my father. God is my God. And I told him yes, and I keep telling him yes. And that's why the enemy doesn't like me, because I keep telling God yes. Regardless of what happens throughout my life, the thing that I know, Sister LaRue, God is not going to change. My assignment has not changed. And the reason that I'm here on this earth, I must fulfill while I'm here. So my answer is yes. So I stand before you this morning excited about the word of God, excited about what God is going to do through his word. Because that's where the power lies. That's why the power, where the power is. The word says that the grass withereth, the flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forevermore. You may forget what I said, but that word is going to stand. You may be in a completely different location next week, but the word of God is going to stand. You may go through some things through your life. You may add on to the testimonies that you have on your roster, but the word of God is going to stand. And so that's the most important thing. And so I stand this morning. I'm excited about the word, excited about what God is going to do, excited about what he's going to do for those that are watching the live. We love you. We're glad that you're here this morning, excited about what God is going to speak to your heart through his word. And for those that will watch the replay, we're excited about what God is doing in your life through his word. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans 8. We're going to be in Romans 8. We're going to start at verse 28, and we're going to go through verse 39. You say that's a lot of scriptures. If you say that's a lot of scriptures, that means we need to read all of them. Amen. If you think that's a lot, that, that yeah. Go on and add on to your reading. That's a good thing. Amen. If you bow your heads, I'll pray. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. Now, Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, for your word that's sharper than any two-edged sword. 
We thank you, God, that your word accomplishes the end to which it was sent. Thank you, God, that you speak to your people this morning. Thank you that you move this morning, that you heal this morning, that you deliver, and that you make free. Now, God, I thank you this morning that you stand strong in me, just as you stood in mom in her lifetime. I thank you that you stand boldly in me as you stand in daddy. And that you get all the credit, you get all the praise, you get all the thanks, and that you have your way in this place, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody who agree with their prayer, say amen. 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 Now, y'all, let me do something right quick. Because y'all know I don't know how to be anybody else but me. Amen. I don't care how dressed up I am, I'm still going to be Lindsay. Uh -huh. Y'all got to swallow this mint I have. I don't know how my daddy does this. My daddy will pop a mint in, and Grayson, he can sing with one end. And I was up here fighting for my life, trying my best not to <laughs> swallow this thing and choke. Listen, the struggle was real, but I made it. Woo, thank God. I don't see how he, I'm going to ask daddy about that. How do you do that? Because, mm-mm, it's a lot, he makes it look a lot easier than it is. We're not doing that again. Are you there, Romans 8? Look at verse 28. Now, what I'm going to do is you may have the King James Version. And look, if you don't have what we call a paper Bible, if you have the Bible app on your phone, or go get the Bible app right quick. You can download it. It takes literally less than three minutes. Download the Bible app so that you can read the word for yourself. Don't take people's word for it when they tell you what a scripture is. That's how you got a lot of people thinking that things are in the Bible that are not even there. You won't find a scripture that says that God helps those who help themselves. That's not in there. So there's a lot of people that have taken cliches and phrases that they've heard throughout their lives, and they believe it's in the Bible, but it's not there. That's why you need to read it for yourself, all right? I, we're at Romans 8. We're going to start at verse 28. I'm going to read it from the Amplified. Y'all know I like the Amplified version because it breaks it down for us. But if you're reading in the King James Version or another version, it may read a little bit differently for you, but that's okay. We're going to the same place. Everybody say we're going to the same place. We're going to the same place. All right, but I'm going to read it from the Amplified. It says, and let me tell y'all something. This is this is fighting for the number one favorite spot with Jeremiah 29, 11 for me. This scripture we're about to read here in the Amplified, it's, it's neck and neck is the door. Because when I tell you this scripture has been holding me in this season of my life, it, it, it's a good one. And I like how the Amplified says it. It says, and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, everybody say he's deeply concerned about us, he's deeply concerned causes about all us. things to work together as a plan for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Keep reading. For those whom he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand, he also predestined, predestined to be conformed to the image of his son and ultimately shared his complete sanctification so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, declared free of the guilt of sin. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity. What then shall we say to the, to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful against us? He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against God's elect, his chosen ones? It is God who justifies us, declaring us blameless and putting us in a right relationship with himself. Who is the one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty. And more than that, who was raised from the dead and who is at the right hand of God, interceding with the Father for us. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, just as it is written, and forever remains written, for your sake we are put to death all day long. We are regarded as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, everybody say yet. Yes. In all these things we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death, nor life, nor angels, 
nor principalities, nor things present and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today I want to talk about separation anxiety. Say that back to me, separation anxiety. You know, separation anxiety can be defined as a condition that's characterized by excessive distress when an individual is separated from what they're attached to. And it shows up as fear, it shows up as worry due to changes in relationships, work, living situations, and life changes. You know, when you go through something and then all of a sudden you feel a little distant from God. When we don't get our way, sometimes we, you know, kind of distance ourselves a little bit. You know, you don't necessarily want to talk to God right then because you didn't get your way. You don't want to talk to God because that thing didn't pan out and work out the way you wanted it to. So, you know, I'm not in a rush to get into prayer time with God because I don't really know what to say to you because you didn't do what I wanted you to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, any, uh, y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You, ain't nobody never went to prayer time with a pal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, life get a little weird sometimes, and some of the things that that we see happen that we think God is gonna work another way, and 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 the things that we think He's gonna do this way, and and do this and do that, and get rid of this, and get, and He doesn't do that. Sometimes when you go into your prayer time, it's like you know I'm a, I'm a worship you, I'm a praise you, but I don't understand what you just did. I don't, I don't understand why you let that go down like that. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. And so that causes, that can, that can start a separation. Have you all ever seen little children in the store when they're trying to get away from their parents? At first they move a little bit. And then they see if anybody's watching. And then they take, take another little step and they move a little bit more. And then they look to see if they're paying attention. And then next thing you know, they take another, and they just keep inching further and further away from their parents until they get lost somewhere. Y'all ever, I've seen it happen in real time. I've literally seen it, and I'm like, y'all will see, y'all will see, and I mean, they take the little smaller steps, and they so, you know, calculating what they're doing, but sometimes as believers, when we go through things, we take a little step. It may just be, I'm not going to pray this morning. It may be, oh, I'm not going to show that person compassion that God told me to do things a certain way for or it may be, oh, I'm not going to forgive them because I'm not ready yet. Those are little steps that you've taken away from God and away from your purpose and away from what he's put you on this earth to do. And what the enemy likes to do, he likes to keep us distracted long enough just to try to separate us. The word tells us there's nothing that can. Amen. But don't you know that you just slowly inching yourself away from your position? Away from the place that God has you in, away from your place of authority, away from your place in God, away from your place of peace. That thing that you, you put your focus on, that thing that you put your focus on addressing, that thing is slowly causing you to step away from the place that you have in God. Everybody say separation anxiety. Separation. You may say, I don't feel God like I used to. I don't, I don't, I just, you know, when I go to prayer time, I don't feel it like I used to. Okay, well, God doesn't change. His word doesn't change. He's faithful. He's true. He's everything he said he would be. He said, I'm, you know, I'm a God. I don't change. Um, so could it be that we did a switcheroo? Could it be that we are out of place, that we are out of alignment with his will, that we are out of alignment with what he's called us to do and who he has called us to be? Could it be that it's us? Yeah. But it's easier for us to say, well, I just don't feel God. I don't feel like he's with me. He's with you. Yes, he he's just is with you. I mean, he said, if you make your bed in hell, I am there. He, everybody say, he's with me. But every now and then, those things that come to distract you and deter you are all about just getting you to take a step away from your place, to get you a step away from your assignment. And so today it becomes, okay, I'm not going to do praise and worship this morning. 
That's a step. Okay, I'm not going to pray this morning. That's another step. I'm not going to forgive that person. you taking another step. And then all of a sudden, the, and th this is the thing about disobedience. The further we get over in it, the easier it becomes. Amen. It'll bother, you know, at first it'll really bother you. But the more and more you get over into it and the more comfortable you become with saying no to God and the more comfortable you become with ignoring his voice and the more you become comfortable with ignoring his warnings and his signals, the easier it is to ignore him. Amen. And you try to figure out when you get way out there, it's like, how did I? It all started with that first step. Amen. That first one. And then another and another. It's all about moving you from your position. It's all about trying to separate you from his love. It's all about trying to isolate you and make you feel like you're by yourself. When God said in his word, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you so that you can boldly say that the Lord is your helper and you don't have to fear what man is going to do to you. Amen. But the enemy is after your position. He is after moving you out of your spot just long enough for you to miss the promise. Can the promise still come? Yes. But why does it have to be delayed because I'm disobedient? Why does it, it's, and it's not always other people. You know, other people can be involved in the promises of God and they can be disobedient, but sometimes it's us. Because we're not ready yet. Because we don't want to say yes yet. Because we don't feel like we're ready yet. Because we don't feel like we're convinced that God has really called us. That God really wants us to, us to do that. We're not really convinced yet. And all the while, the enemy is just trying to push you out of your spot. He's trying to push you out of your position. Everybody say, I'm keeping my position. I'm keeping my position. Now, one thing I remember in elementary school, I was always surrounded by consistent, accountable adults. Yep. If they said they were going to do something, that's what they were going to do. If they said they were going to be there at a certain time, that's the time that they would be there without fail. That's what I was surrounded by. Now, we had one cousin that was older than us that always promised us she was taking us to show business, LaRue. <laughs> I, I mean, every time we went to Houston, she, oh, we're going to take y'all to show me. We're going to take, uh, and I think one time she took us about 10 minutes before they closed. <laughs> but other than that, all the adults in my life, Brother Jimmy, were accountable and they were consistent and they were people of their word. I'm blessed by that. Amen. But one time, y'all, I had a third grade teacher, Mrs. Ingram beautiful teacher. My elementary teachers were involved. And so I was going to, to her class early before school started. I would go help her get her class set up and all that. Like I enjoyed doing stuff like that. I, I loved it. Y'all could not tell me I wasn't going to be a teacher when I got older. Because that was my thing, honey. I, I loved it all. That morning, and I believe I was going earlier because I believe mama was in school at that time. She was finishing her college courses at that time. And so they worked it out where I could come early to help her. And so mama could go to class. I think that's why. And so that morning, Brother Jimmy, she was running late. And when I tell y'all, it cracked my entire world. Because where are you? Like, I'm waiting by you. Like, where I'm so used to consistent, you know, and she's human. Yeah. Yeah. But do you all know that those kind of experiences can mess with what you believe about God to be true? Yeah. Look all through your life. The people that disappointed you for whatever reason. The people that didn't show up for whatever reason. The people that didn't have your back for whatever reason. Those people that betrayed you. Those people that let you down. You don't think the enemy tried to use that okay. to pervert how you feel about God and how trustworthy he is? Amen. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Women can go through several bad relationships, bad marriages, and all of a sudden all men are dogs. Yep. Oh, 
No, they not. Nope. All men are not. That's right. Amen. All of them ain't saints either. Amen. But they're not all dogs. Amen. But if you have enough bad experiences, it can taint the way you view one area. That's right. So you don't think that some of that that you hear, that the end, the darts that the enemy shoots in your head about who God is and, and try to make you wonder, is he going to come through for you? To try to make you wonder if he's going to have your back this time? To make you wonder if he's going to heal you this time? Y'all don't think he's using some of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All those feelings that you have of abandonment, those feelings of anger, those feelings of frustration from way back here. People didn't do what they said they were going to do. Or they turned out to be somebody else. Whatever experiences that you've been through, because if you are an adult, you've been through something. Amen. You've been through something with somebody. Somebody that switched up. Somebody that ticked you. I mean, you've been through something. Amen. But those people are not God. Those experiences that you had, although he was there with you through the experience, that was not him. That ain't how he moves. Amen. He may disappoint you, but he going to be who he said he is. Amen. You might not like the way he did it. You might not like the way it happened, but he is who he said he is. Everything that he said in his word, I used to sing a song with, with my cousin, Gretchen, it says, everything he promised and so so much more. Who he promised he is, that's who he is. Amen. What he said in his word, that's who he is. Not your past. Not your past experience. Not your past disappointments. God is who he said he is. And we don't have to have separation anxiety from him because he's right there. He's not going to leave you. I don't care what situation you go through. God is right there with you, and he is not going to leave. And sometimes that is all you can hold on to, is that God is with me, and he's not going to leave. Amen. And sometimes you need to say that out loud so you can hear it, so your situation can hear it, so your heart can hear it. God is with me, and he is not going to leave. That is a good way to encourage yourself. Say, baby, all, all this can be tearing up all around me. I can feel like everything in my life is on fire, but I know that God is with me, and he is not going to leave. I don't care how the enemy tries to discourage you. I don't care what he says to you. I don't care the seeds of doubt that he tries to plant. I don't care what you flipping on television, and all of a sudden, oh, this is what I'm going through. Oh, wait, that's not a good outcome. The enemy is very strategic. Yes, yes, he is. Very strategic. Yes. But even in that, God is with me. And he is not going to leave. You can boldly say that if you don't know anything else about what you're going through this morning. If you don't know anything else about how you're coming out. If you don't know anything else about how to predict the outcome. And how God is going to make all the pieces work together. And how he's going to make everything make sense. I know if nothing else, God is with me, and he is not going to leave. It's not up for debate. It's not up for discussion. And I don't have to wait and see. You know, when people promise you things, it's like, okay, we're going to see. We, yeah, you, you say you're going to be there, but we're going we gonna to see. <laughs> I, yeah, okay, I believe you, but we're still going to see. With God, it's already fixed. When he says he's not going to leave you, He's not going to leave. Thank you, Father. Thank you. But we got to make sure we don't leave him. Amen. We got to make sure that we don't depart from his presence. That we don't do stuff to inch away. Y'all know the children, they try to hold a hand. I don't know what it is about holding hands, baby. They just, oh, they sick of that. And baby, they will do everything they can. They twist and turn their bodies all kind of way, try to twirl around. All the things go down to the floor, all that. Just trying to get you from, stop touching my hand. They want to be independent. They want to walk across the street alone. They want to go by themselves. I don't want to walk by myself. I don't walk by myself. I do it. Leave me alone. Y'all know that's us sometimes, huh? Mm-hmm. When, when you decide you want to take matters into your own hand because God taking too long, yeah. oh, 
when you decide that you don't want to do it that way that God showed you, when you decide you don't want it to play out like the dream that he showed you, when you decide them steps that he asking you to take are unnecessary, this is you. I don't want to hold your hands. I don't want I don't want you to hold my hand. I don't want you to uh um, I want to walk across the street by myself and I'm gonna get hit. That's what I want to do. Isn't that something? At our big age. We're adults, but we're still as children. But that's what we look like. God is saying, I want you to do it this way. I want you to forgive this person. And then I'm going to show you something. And you say, uh-uh, I don't want to forgive them. You don't know what all they did to me. I need time. And God said, I've given you six years for that. Uh-uh, but you don't understand. It's, it's, it's more to it than that. I don't, I don't want to do it that way. I don't want to do that. <laughs> You're wasting time. Amen. You want to get hit. Trying to get across that street by yourself. And you got God right here with you, walking with you to shield you. Because what happens is when you walk with your parents, anything that's coming your way, they're going to they gonna shield it. They're going to block it. They're going to pull you back. When you get when you getting out too fast out in that street, they're going to snatch you back and say, hold it, you're going too fast. I can see something down the road that you can't see. Because y'all know when, we, when we're younger, we have real short attention spans sometimes. And, and we can't see way down the road. But your parent can. They can see that truck that's coming way down the lane. But all you're thinking about is, oh, I got somewhere to be. I got to get across this street. But that parent can say, hold, hold it, because I can see this coming down here. And it's going pretty fast. I don't want you to get hit. Amen. Amen. But we feel like, I can do it myself. God, you take it too long. God, I don't have to. I don't have to wait on that answer Monday morning. I'm gonna call that 800 number today, and you can, yeah. but you're not gonna talk to the right person because it ain't the right time. Okay, come on. Come on. You ever get so anxious for an answer that you want to make something happen, and because you are an adult and you can do things, you can, Amen. but you get the wrong person on the line. God tells you, wait and call Tuesday afternoon. Yeah. And you say, I just, I just can't take this no more. I, I, I just got to call. I gotta, I'm going to get it over with. It's, it's going to be what it's going to be. Whatever it is, it's going to be what it's going to be. I'm just going to call. You call Monday morning and you talk to a fool. Oh, and then you want to say, well, God, where are you? <laughs> I'm at the Tuesday call I told you to be on. <laughs> And you want to say, well, if it's God, if he can do it Tuesday afternoon, why can't he have some that same person on Monday morning? Because that ain't how he want to do it. No. See, sometimes what I find and what God does is not always just about our answer. Amen. He can work a few different things at one time. See, what you don't know is sometimes when you call and you talk to somebody, it's not necessarily about the answer that they have for you. Sometimes it's about God wants you on the line. He may tell you something encouraging to say to them. It may just be your presence on the line because he's with you. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Amen. Sometimes we think it's just about what we need worked out, but we don't know that God is working through us while he's working that out for us. Did you get that? See, I don't know how many times I have talked to people in customer service, all, you know, on 1-800 numbers, call the people, and they have to pause and say, thank you for asking me how I am. Amen. Nobody's asked me how I'm doing all day. Or thank you for being kind because every caller that I've spoken to today has been terrible. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. You don't know what God is doing. You don't know who needs encouragement. You don't know who God is going to use you to encourage. But we so focused on what we need and what our answer is and we call it because God got an answer for us. God got an answer for them too. Yeah, 
You don't know what God is sparking inside of a person. You don't know the person that you call that's on the other end of that phone. You don't know how God, let me tell you something, how intricately God moves. You can call a person on that line and your voice can remind them of somebody from their childhood. Yep. And because they're reminded of that person, they're reminded of the person that prayed for them, and they're reminded that they need to get back in relationship with God. They're reminded of what they're supposed to be doing in spite of all their decisions that they've made to that point. Amen. That's how bad God is. All right. He can use anything. But when we are one tracked on just us yeah. and getting what we want, it's easy to just start slowly just inching away. Your position's still right here. You. Your place of authority is still right here. But I don't want to do that. And it becomes a little bit easier every time. It'll bother you at first, but then slowly it becomes easier and easier and easier. And then the enemy say, I got you. But we don't have to have separation anxiety because God is not going to leave. He's going to stay and he's going to be and he's going to be everything that he said he is. But we got to stay where Amen. we're supposed to be. Amen. We don't have to be separated from him. His word says there's nothing that can separate us from his love. And so let's look at it this morning and let's see. First, we have to recognize when you first noticed that you were inching away from your place, your position in God. When did it happen? What was going on? What was the situation that was going on? Think about it. When you first noticed yourself starting to just, just ease on away from your place. When you start to feel yourself drifting a little bit, when it used to irritate you to lift your hands, when it started to bother you to sing to the Lord, when it started to bother you to go into your prayer time, what was going on at that time? Were you upset with God about something? Were you angry about something that didn't happen the way you wanted it? I mean, really think about it for real, because God is real. You can talk to him like that. Amen. You really can so recognize when you first noticed and what changed, where are you separated? Are you separated? Are you feeling a separation in prayer? Do you feel like there's a disconnect when you're in prayer? Do you feel like, and, and feeling, y'all know that's, that's all relative, but you know what I'm saying. Do you, do you have a feeling that you're disconnected from God when you're in prayer? You go to pray and it's just like, you don't feel like yourself. You don't feel like yourself. You don't, you don't sense what you normally sense in prayer. You just feel like you're just flat. Because you're not really there. Because you can say words, but if your heart is not there, if your spirit is not there, if you are not in connection with God, it's not going to be the same. Amen. That's why I don't let everybody pray for me. Amen. Was everybody talking about praying ain't praying? Amen. Oh, okay. Y'all, uh, that's a little lesson for another time. But baby, baby listen, would you like for us to pray for that? Uh-uh, I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> All right, got my people on it. They need to be. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, yeah, so God got. God has people calling your name that you never met. Never met. I don't ever worry about my name being in wrong people's mouths. You know why? Because he got my name in, in, in some other mouths, too. Oh, okay. Y'all will figure that one out, too. Uh-huh. But figure out where... Do I feel a disconnect? Am I disconnected from God in my decision making? Have I began to just start doing stuff that I want to do? Or do I still go to him and say, God, I need your wisdom on this. I need you to tell me what to do. I need you to tell me what direction I need to go in. I need you to speak to me about this before I decide. I need you to help me make this decision. Or you just say, oh, child, I'm grown. Let me just go ahead on. This is what I need to do. This is, you know, black and white. Okay, yeah, door number one. Here we go. It's going to be what it's going to be anyway. That's a disconnect 
because he's always ready. His word says that he perfects everything that concerns us. There is nothing that can concern us that God cannot perfect. I'm a witness today. The smallest things that some people would think that God wouldn't even care about. He specializes and he cares. Is there a disconnect with my decision making and seeking him and saying, God, what do you want me to do? Amen. This is what I want to do, yeah. but is this what you want me to do? Is this where you want me to be? When people, when people ask me to pray for them about moving, about changing jobs, changing careers, things like that, I'm very careful with what I say because if it's not where you're supposed to be, I don't want that to happen. Because I don't care how good it may look to you on this side, if that's not where God wants you to be, if, that, if that's not the place that's a part of Jeremiah 29 11 for your life, I don't want you to go. Amen. Because I know that if you lean to your own understanding and you go to a position or you go to a place or you go to a location that's outside of God's will for your life, no matter how good it looks, no matter what the benefits look like, no matter how great it looks, no matter how much of an escape it may be, I know that there is heartache connected to that Amen. because it's outside of what God has for you. Amen. So somebody coming to me and saying, well, I want you to pray for me that I get this job that's out of state and such and such. I'm praying, God, whatever your will is for their life, if this, if this aligns with that, if this is what you want them to have, if this is your blessed place for them, if this is the place that you've destined them to be in, I thank you, God, that you push it through where nothing can stop it. Amen. But if this is a distraction, if this is something that is designed to deter them and destroy them, I thank you, God, that you block this. Amen. That's how I pray for myself, too. Any opportunity that comes up, hold, hold, hold what you got. I don't care how good it looks. They can make it look real sweet, Sister Deborah. But I always say, God, you can see what I cannot see. Yes. You know what I do not know. Yes. Yes. If this is you, I need you to speak. Yes. If this is you, if this is your opportunity, if this is what you have aligned for my life, if this is where you want me to be, if this is where you want me to go, I'll do it. Yes. But just going and doing stuff just because, or just because somebody asked you, uh-huh, because I've become too serious about my life and the reason that God has me here. Amen. And I know how important it is to be in your position. Amen. Amen. See, you see how easy that is though? Yeah. To get out of your position. Cause that looks good. Yeah. That place looks promising. But no matter how promising it looks, if it's not connected to my promise, I don't want it. I don't want to. I don't want to separate myself from the will of God. I don't want to separate myself from the place that He has designed for me. Remind yourself of God's track record and His faithfulness. Sometimes we forget how bad. Sometimes we forget all the things that he has done. We have so many testimonies in our archive. And y'all know about archives? Sometimes those things just sit. Yeah. Amen. The physical files just collect dust on a shelf. Amen. But there's something about when you go and pull those things out and say, oh, I forgot about this. I forgot he healed me back then. I forgot he healed my heart back then. I forgot that he made that opportunity available for me back then. I forgot that I was chosen over 15 other people who were way more qualified than me back then. What has God done that's sitting and is just collecting dust on the archive? What has God done for you that you forgot about? Those things that were so big to you at that time that have become insignificant now. Go look back. Those times your family was hungry and God brought groceries out of nowhere. Those times your children were sick and God supernaturally healed them. Those times 
sometimes you got answers to questions that you didn't even know how to ask, but God just connected you to a person and put you in a conversation. And before you knew it, you were receiving the answers that you needed for that time. And you knew it was nobody but God. But because you moved on, it's just collecting dust. Go back and check his track record. We got his track record all through the word. But I got his track record all through my life. There's a song that says, all my life you've been so faithful and so good. I got a, I got a track record that I can look at of what God has done for me. I can look at the times that he saved me. I can look at the times that he's delivered me. I can look at the times that I put myself in situations that God had to snatch me out of. I can look at the times that he's healed my body. I can look at the times that the enemy tried to attack me and kill me when I was on my way to preach. Yeah. And God said, uh-uh, it ain't her time yet. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. His track record is immaculate. Yes. His track record. He is undefeated. Yep, glory. Thank you, Lord. Yep. His track record. He has proven. Even though he doesn't. Listen. God has done enough where he doesn't have to prove anything. Amen. But he keeps proving himself. Over and over and over and over. Every situation, over and over and over. He says, I'm going to be your God. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be beside you. I'm going to work for you. I'm going to cause things to work out for your good because that's who I am. He doesn't have to prove anything, but he does. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you this morning. Get back into position. Get back into the place of prayer. Thank you, Lord. Get back to the place of sanctification where you care about what God thinks. Thank you, Lord. When you love a person, when you care about a person, you care what they think. You care about hurting them. You care about how your actions can affect them. Amen. Amen. Get back into your position of prayer. I know the enemy can try to make you weary because you're the one that has to pray for everybody. But guess what? If not you, then who? Who can God count on? Who can God count on in your family? I know you want to pass the baton off, but it's prayer. It's intercession. You don't pass that off. You got to stand for this city, these cities. We can't accept things just the way they are. We can't just say, oh, that's them. We have to pray and intercede. For this city, Beaumont, Port Arthur, Orange, listen, the state, the world, we have to pray. We have to be on our post. That is why the enemy keeps trying to push you to just inch a little bit. Because he knows that somebody is counting on you to pray for him because nobody else is. And you think, oh, I'm just praying. Ain't no just that goes in front of prayer. Amen. It's just prayer. I'm just praying. No, that's a huge responsibility. Yes, it is. And God takes it personally. Amen. You praying for your family? Keep on praying. Amen. You're praying for the people on your job? You keep praying. I don't care how they're treating you and what you see. What you see in the spirit, that doesn't stop you from praying. If anything, that should push you further in. Amen. Because you know what you're working with. You keep praying. Amen. You praying for your loved ones? Keep praying. You're praying for strangers that you've met. Keep on praying. Amen. And you say, well, I don't see a change yet. Keep praying. Amen. Get in your position. Get in the place that God has assigned you to be. Because the enemy wants to just push you a little bit. Amen. Just push you a little bit further out. So you can miss what's connected to this place of promise. Every head is bowed and every eye is closed. Father, we thank you for this time. God, we thank you for your word. Thank you for what you're doing in this atmosphere right now, God. We thank you for being a sovereign God. We bless your holy and your righteous name. Thank you, God, that your people are getting back into position, back to the place of prayer. 
back to the place of sanctification. God, we thank you that you are drawing us by your spirit. Thank you that we are not distracted, we are not destroyed, but that we draw closer to you, God. Now, if, you, if you're here this morning, or if you're watching this live, you're watching the replay, I want to let you know the most important position that you can be in is that of a believer Amen. that is saved by the power of God. I want to let you know that eternity is too long, yes, it is. hell is too hot. And contrary to what other people have said and the picture that they have painted, hell is not a bar, it's not a club, it's not a beach, it is not a party. It is a place where you go and you burn and you never burn up. I don't want anybody connected to me to go there. But you have a choice. God sent his son Jesus to die on a cross just for us. And he stayed there, but he didn't stay there. He died, but he didn't stay dead. He got up with all power in his hands. He took anything that we could have ever done. The word says that we all fall short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We're all still here, so we're working on something. So it's not just you. Whatever you've done, whatever you feel guilt about in your past, Jesus took all that to the cross with him. And he died and he rose again so that you could, you could be forgiven. We could be forgiven. And you could be made free. I want to encourage you this morning while believers are praying. I want to encourage you to invite Jesus into your heart this morning. It's not something that you pay for. It's not something that you work for. Salvation is a free gift that is given to us. And all you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believing that God raised his son Jesus from the dead, and you shall be saved. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That's all you have to do. And what we're going to do this morning, we're going to pray a prayer. I'm going to pray a prayer, and you're going to repeat it after me. And he says, is it that simple? Yep, he made it that simple for us. That simple. You've been putting it off. Or maybe you need to rededicate your life back to Christ. Give your life back to Jesus. I want to let you know it's not too late. You're not too far gone. You haven't done too much. You're not too far out there where God cannot reach you. He loves you and he cares for you. So we're going to say this prayer together. Everybody repeat after me, dear God. I know without Jesus that I am lost. I believe your word that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. I now invite you into my life and receive you by faith as my Lord and Savior. I am sorry for my sins. And I thank you for your forgiveness. Jesus, you are my Lord. I am now a new creature in Christ and a child of God. Thank you for saving me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer, I want to let you know that you are saved. Heaven is rejoicing right now. We are rejoicing with you this morning if you are watching the live i want to encourage you put in the comments that i got saved this morning that is the most important decision of your life i want to encourage you to join a bible teaching bible believing church if you're in the golden triangle area i'm going to encourage you to come here to the fellowship 1180 washington boulevard in Beaumont, texas we're here Sunday mornings at 8.30 a.m. And, and we are live on Facebook Live on Wednesdays, 6.30 p.m. We begin with prayer and we go into praise and worship and ministry of the word. And listen, it will change your life. God is concerned about you. He's concerned about the world that you live in. And he wants you to live a full, abundant life life. So we want to thank you so much for being here with us this morning. We love you. We thank God for you and we will see you on
Well, we won't be here on Wednesday. I need to give that announcement as well. But we will see you here on Facebook on Sunday morning, bright and early, 8.30. That's going to be Christmas Eve. So we are going to be so excited celebrating the birth of baby Jesus. We love you, and we'll see you next Sunday.